Our next storyteller is Cheryl Chagnon Dreyes. She is a member of the Muskeg Lake, Cree Nation, Saskatchewan, Treaty 6, and resides in Calgary, Treaty 7, Alberta. She has been an Indigenous activist within Calgary and area for the past decade, marching, singing, and drumming for Indigenous justice for women, for missing and murdered women, girls, and two-spirit. She champions the environment and speaking up for those who cannot. Cheryl is a mother of two, Kokum, her grandmother, to two beautiful grandsons, and step Kokum to two beautiful twin granddaughters. Welcome, Cheryl. Let me just unmute you here. Thank you, Ginger. It's an honor to be sharing airtime with these wonderful storytellers. I'm very blessed. Um, my name is Cheryl Chagnon Grayeyes. I was blessed with a beautiful name in the Swift Lodge. My Cree name is Nanantua Yasquayo Yakutakinuti. And I hail from Treaty 6 Muskeg Lake Cree Nation. I am also a veteran. I joined the Air Force when I was 17 years old and achieved the rank of corporal. Really loved being in the Air Force. I enjoyed my military time. I enjoyed my military training. And um, I come from a strong line of military people. Uh, my dad was in the Air Force. Uh, my grandfather, my mother's uh, dad, uh, Joseph Gray Eyes, was in the Army, as were his uh, siblings. And uh, his sister, Mary Reed Gray Eyes, was the first Indigenous woman in the Army in Canada. Um, I want to share a story today of someone that I admire, who is the most decorated Indigenous soldier in Canadian history. And that is Sergeant Tom McCrae. I had done research on this man and um, I gathered this story that I want to share with you today. And uh, I share it in a good way. I share it to honor not only Tommy Prince, who has left this world, but also all of our veterans, those who are still with us, and all the myriad of our, our spirits who have crossed over. Um, November 11th is Remembrance Day. We wear our poppies to honor those who gave their lives, those who sacrificed so much so that we can have our freedoms, including being able to vote in a democratic society. Uh, so this is a little story about Tommy Prince. It was a cold bluster, October 25th, 1959, when Thomas George Prince was born in a canvas tent near Petersfield, Manitoba. One of 11 children born to Henry and Arabella Prince. He was grandson of Ojibwe chief William Prince of the 1884 Nile River Voyagers and great, great grandson of the mighty chief Egbert. When his family moved to Broken Head Reserve near Scantabury, Manitoba, little warrior Prince was only five years old when forced to attend Elkhorn Residential School. He survived the residential school experience and at 14, he came home with a grade eight education. Prince's father was an expert hunter and trapper and Prince developed exceptional skills in tracking, hunting and marksmanship. Growing up in the bush. Wanting more, Prince joined the army cadets as a team, easily meeting the recruiting requirements. However, when he applied to the Canadian Army, he was rejected several times due to widespread discrimination towards Indigenous people. He kept on fighting to get into the Army and finally enlisted at age 24, June 3rd, 1920. Originally a sapper combat engineer, Prince volunteered for the parachute unit. By late 1942, he was training with an elite American unit, the Green Berets. Prince learned stealth tactics, amphibious and mountain warfare, rock climbing, hand-to-hand -hand combat and explosives. He became a valiant scout. Prince was well suited to the special services. Using the skills he'd mastered growing up on reserve and this versatile assault group gained a reputation 
for specialized reconnaissance and raiding. Tommy Prince was a true warrior spirit, an unpredictable yet entertaining brother in arms, quiet, attentive, observant. The Prince of the Brigade was both a prankster and a silent assassin. At night, he would remove his boots, slip on his moccasins, creep silently into the enemy camp as they slept. He would do crazy things like stealing the Germans' shoes right off their feet. Sometimes during the night, he and his colleagues would shoe polish their faces, creep into the German barracks, and slit the throat of every third German soldier sleeping. Come morning, the Germans would wake to find that their shoes were missing, their bunkmates were dead, totally freaking them out. Near the village of Majo, Italy, Prince snuck up to the German position and killed every man in every bunk, making the attack the next morning much easier. The Germans rightly feared the Devil's Brigade. It was a cold blustery February day when reconnaissance sergeant Prince volunteered to spy on the Germans. An abandoned farmhouse 200 meters from the enemy served as his observation post. 1400 meters of wire connected him to his brigade. With a clear view of the enemy's artillery placements, Prince reported on the German movements. Ally and German artillery fire became heavy as a result of Prince's work. During a 24-hour solo watch, Prince's communication line was cut by bombing. Donning farmer's garb, he grabbed a hoe and in full view of the German soldiers, acted like a farmer tending his crops. He slowly inched his way along the line until he found where it was damaged. He stooped to tie his shoes and fix the wire while the German soldiers watched, oblivious to his true identity. Pretending to be disgusted with the soldiers, Prince shook his fist at the Germans and then the Allies, yelling, Idiot de Shaki! Idiot de Shaki! Idiots and fools! Something he had picked up from the locals. He returned to the farmhouse to continue his reporting. Over the next 24 hours, four German batteries were destroyed thanks to him. Six months later, the Devil's Brigade headed north, entering southern France. It was a cold, blustery September day when Sergeant Prince and a private, scouting deep behind enemy lines, located a large German battalion. Coming back from their reconnaissance, the two men were caught in a fierce crossfire between French forces and the Germans. Prince and the private started sniping at the Germans. Taking out so many of them, they withdrew. Then the French commander asked Prince where his company was. He simply pointed to the private. The French commander was shocked to realize that it was just Prince and a private behind the forced German retreat. He thought the rapid fire was coming from at least 50 Allied soldiers. Impressed by Prince's bravery, he recommended Prince for the Croix de Guerre command. Unfortunately, the courier was killed en route, and the message never reached General Charles de Gaulle. Prince returned to his unit, leading them back to the German encampment. The entire battalion of a thousand Germans was captured. By this time, our stalwart warrior had been without food, water, and sleep for 72 hours, crossing over 70 kilometers of rugged mountainous terrain. When the fighting ended in France, Prince was summoned to Buckingham Palace to receive his medals from King George VI. It was noted that Sergeant Prince's courage and utter disregard for personal safety were an inspiration to his fellows and a marked credit to his unit. Tommy Prince was honorably discharged from the Army June 15, 1945, and returned to Canada. At home, Prince faced another war, 
racism from the Canadian government. Despite his wartime service as an Indigenous man, he was not allowed to vote in federal elections, and he was refused the same benefits as other Canadian veterans. Prince briefly owned his own cleaning business, but it failed in his absence as he fought on behalf of his people. He lobbied for change, but became frustrated with the inequity and the lack of change to the racist Indian Act. Facing unemployment, immigration, and discrimination, Prince re-enlisted in 1951 and served with the Princess Patricia's Canadian Light Infantry, the PPPLI. He was second in command of a rifle platoon, platoon, serving two tours of duty in Korea. He returned to Canada and remained in the Army, serving at Winnipeg's personnel depot until honorably discharged in 1953 due to crippling arthritis in his knee. It was a hot, sweltering day in June 1955 when Prince witnessed a man drowning at the Alexander Docks in Winnipeg. Prince, ever the warrior, leapt into the fast-moving waters and saved the man. The heroic prince, however, fell on hard times. Living out his last years in a Salvation Army shelter, he died at the Deer Lodge Hospital in Winnipeg on November 25, 1977. He was only 62 years old. It was a cold, blustery day when Sergeant Thomas George Prince was buried in Winnipeg's Brookside Military Cemetery. His pallbearers were his PPCLI brothers in arms. Ojibwe men from his reserve chanted and drummed the death of a warrior honor song as he was lowered into the grave. More than 500 people attended his funeral, including Manitoba's Lieutenant Governor, and consults from France, Italy, and the US. All in all, Prince was awarded 11 medals for bravery, and three of them in Korea. He was one of only 59 Canadians awarded the Silver Medal during the Second World War, and one of three also receiving the Military Medal, making Prince the most decorated Indigenous soldier in Canada. He was also the most decorated soldier in the Devil's Brigade. In 1968, Hollywood portrayed the elite unit in the movie, The Devil's Brigade, with, Chief's, uh, with Prince's character called Chief. Tommy Prince was married with five children. He had a strong sense of civic duty and a fierce pride in his city. Ever the warrior, Prince dedicated himself to attaining increased educational and economic opportunities for Indigenous people. All my life, I had wanted to do something to help my people recover their good name. Tommy Prince said, I wanted to show them they were as good as any white man on this land. Perhaps even better, Sergeant Prince. Perhaps even better. Thank you. Honor. Harvard.